We are on question number 91 of Physics GRE GR0877. Started from the bottom, now we're here. Let's dive into it. Home stretch. In static electromagnetism, let E, B, J, and rho be the electric field, magnetic field, current density, and charge density, respectively. Which of the following conditions allows the electric field to be written in the form E equals minus del phi, where phi is the electrostatic potential? So electrostatics deals with stationary or slow moving electric charges. The static electric field, a, a static electric field also means no varying magnetic fields. Therefore, the partial of B divided by the partial of T equals zero. So per Maxwell's equa equations, uh, so del times the cross product of E, the electric field, equals negative partial of B divided by partial of T. And again, here that has to equal zero, C. 92. A long, straight, hollow cylindrical wire with an inner radius r and an outer radius 2r carries a uniform current density. Which of the following graphs best represents the magnitude of the magnetic field as a function of the distance from the center of the wire? So for part one, which is from 0 to r, the integral of b 2 pi r dr equals u o i um, of e and I of E, I subscript E equals the enclosed current. So for radius less than R, the enclosed current is zero since the surface with the current is not enclosed. So since the current is zero, the magnetic field is also zero there. For part two, which is R to lowercase r, um, I subscript E equals the integral of I two pi R dr. And so we're gonna do some algebra and that equals I pi times little r squared minus big R squared, that quantity. And so B uh, is going to equal, again, we're going to do some algebra. And so this quantity is linear. For example, R max, which is 2R, as the problem states, the outer radius. Um, 2R quantity squared minus R squared. That quantity divided by 2R is 3 halves R, which is a linear function. So for part 3, from 2R to infinity, um, B is going to about equal uoi divided by 2 pi r, um, where i equals i total since all the current is enclosed beyond 2r. So that would be answer E. 93, a parallel plate capacitor has plate separation D. The, the space between the plates is empty. A battery supplying voltage VO is connected across the capacitor resulting in electromagnetic energy U subscript O stored in the capacitor. A dielectric of the dielectric constant kappa is inserted so that it just fills the space between the plates. If the battery is still connected, what are the electric field E and the energy U stored in the dielectric in terms of VO and UO? So our capa capacitance equals kappa times the capacitance of the vacuum and the dielectric constant kappa is the amount of more or less charge a substance, substance can hold in the vacuum. And so U is gonna equal UO times, the, uh, times kappa. So a uniform field is one in which the electric field is constant at every point. It can be approximated by placing two conducting plates parallel to each other and maintaining a voltage, which is the potential difference between them. Assuming infinite planes, the magnitude of the electric field E is E equals negative delta phi divided by d, where delta phi is the potential difference or voltage. So all of that results in answer B. 94, an observer, oh, oh, this one, this problem took me longer than any other one to solve probably on the exam. An observer O at rest midway between two sources of light at x equals zero and x equals 10 meters observes the two sources to flash simultaneously. According to a second observer, O prime, moving at a constant speed parallel to the x-axis, one source of light flashes 13 nanoseconds before the other. Which of the following gives the speed of O prime relative to O? So delta T, gotta get the pen ready, delta T equals um, gamma Vx divided by C squared, where gamma equals one over the quantity, one minus V squared over C squared, that quantity square root. And so I like to think about it like this, where the time difference, you have a time difference because of time dilation, um, which is where that comes from, but then that time dilation, the, uh, the light in the moving reference frame is also moving in a shorter 
amount of space because of length contraction and so that's where the gamma comes in or in terms of a fraction of c the speed of light gamma v equals delta tc over x equals 0.39 and so we can't stop there v divided by the quantity uh, 1 minus v squared over c squared that quantity square root equals 0.39 where we're going to set c equal to 1 so we're going to do some algebra right here and Take it, take it, test it, do it for yourself, and you can see that 1.15 v squared equals 0.15. So v is going to equal the square root of 0.13, which is about 0.36, and that is answer C. Number 95, let j hat be a quantum mechanical angular momentum operator. The commutator j hat x, j hat y, comma j hat x is equivalent to which of the following? So we need to know our commutation relations, so I've detailed them out for you over here. And so we also need to know the matrix trick is that a, b, comma, c equals a times b, comma, c, uh, plus a, comma, c times b. Okay, so let's apply this to our problem, and we would see that jx, jy, comma, jx is going to equal jx times jy comma jx plus jx comma jx that times jy and so we know that this commutes with itself and so it equals zero so now we're interested in this where jx times jy comma jx that's going to equal again jx and what is jy jx equal over here with our commutation relations jy jx equals minus i h bar z so h bar z is going to equal j hat in the z direction. So minus i h bar j hat z j hat x and that is going to equal answer d. Which of the following ions cannot be used as a dopant in germanium to make an n-type semiconductor? Germanium has an atomic number of 32, it therefore has K, L, and M shells filled, and four valence electrons in the N shell. So N-type semiconductors have larger electron concentration than hole concentration, which is the opposite for P-type semiconductors. Um, so boron is the only element with less valence electrons, three, than germanium, and would therefore not be a good dopant for an N-type semiconductor. In general, uh, in silicon or germanium, which are the two most common semiconductors, impurity atoms with five valence electrons make N-type uh, semiconductors, while impurity atoms with three valence electrons make P-type semiconductors. So therefore, our answer is D, boron. Number 97, in the Compton effect, a photon with energy E scatters through a 90 degree angle from a stationary electron of mass M. The energy of the scattered photon is, the Compton scattering is lambda final minus lambda initial equals H over MC. And we know that E equals HC over lambda, so lambda equals HC over E. And so one over EF equals one over MC squared plus one over EI. And we're putting the right side in terms of the least common denominator. So therefore, EF equals EIMC squared divided by uh, the quantity EI plus MC squared. And that is answer E. Number 98, which of the following is the principal decay mode of the positive muon? So we know we need to conserve the lepton number, and the positively charged muon has a lepton number equal to minus 1 since it is antimatter. So the electron or the muon, the regular electron or the regular muon have a lepton number equal to 1. Uh, so notice the sign difference for the regular muon versus the antimatter muon. Uh, so the only answer that conserves lepton number is D, and so we can see that this is minus 1 equals, so minus 1 equals, this is the positron, so it's antimatter equals minus 1, plus this is the electron neutrino, that's normal matter, so that's plus 1 lepton number, and that's, this is the anti a muon neutrino, so this is an antimatter, that's minus one. So minus one equals minus one plus one minus one. Yes, minus one equals minus one, so the answer is D. Number 99, a small particle of mass M is at rest on a horizontal circular platform that is free to rotate about a vertical axis through its center. The particle is located at a radius R from the axis 
as shown in the figure above. The platform begins to rotate with constant angular acceleration alpha. Because of friction between the particle and the platform, the particle remains at rest with respect to the platform. When the platform has reached angular speed w, the angle theta between the static frictional force f of s and the inward radial direction is given by which of the following. So the centripetal force f of s cosine theta equals mv squared over r equals mw squared r where v equals w r w being omega. So the centripetal force provided by friction and max at theta equals zero. Um, so the tangential force equals m dv dt equals m r dw dt equals m r alpha. So m r alpha equals f s sine theta, and if m r alpha is greater than f s sine theta, it's going to slip. So sine theta over cosine theta, we need to remember equals tan, the tangent of theta. Uh, so the centripetal force must at least equal the tangential force, where mw squared r equals mr alpha, so fs cosine theta equals fs sine theta, and so sine theta over cosine theta, remember, equals tan theta, so tan theta equals mr alpha over mw squared r, and let's do some algebra, theta equals tan to the minus one, divided up each side by tangent, theta equals tan to the minus one, quantity alpha divided by w squared, and that is answer E. Question 100 of the physics GRE GR0877. Sound the fireworks, crack op open a beer to celebrate it for 21, and let's dive right on into it. The partition function z in statistical mechanics can be written as z equals the sum over r of e to the negative e of r divided by kt. So where the index R ranges over all possible microstates of a system and ER, E subscript R, is the energy of microstate R. For a single quantum mechanical harmonic oscillator with energies E subscript N, it equals N plus one half, that quantity times H bar omega. We're familiar with that. We've seen it throughout the exam. Where N equals zero, one, two, dot, dot, dot. The partici partition function is given by which of the following? So from Planck's radiation formula, very famous formula, I'm sure you know it, E equals, and so we're going to convert it to W, so E equals H bar W divided by the quantity E to the H bar W divided by KT, that quantity minus 1, and the classical partition function as given in the problem, and so the quantum harmonic oscillator again given in the problem. So when we combine all these terms, z equals the sum over the states of i equals e to the negative quantity n plus one half, that's the energy h bar w divided by kt. And so we can pull out our n equals zero term and say e to the minus one half h bar w divided by kt times i to the sum of i to infinity of e to the negative n plus one half that quantity times h bar w divided by kt. And so we're gonna do a little bit of um, a little bit of algebra and summations right here where the sum over i uh, to infinity of x to the n equals one divided by one minus x. And so then z is going to equal e to the minus one half h bar w divided by kt. That quantity divided by one minus e to the negative n plus one half, that quantity times h bar w divided by kt. And so I've given you a little graph down here to prove to you. I've given you two graphs actually to prove to you that if we have e to the minus x over two divided by one minus e to the minus x, that is the same as e to the x over two, so make that positive, uh, divided by e to the x, so make that positive, uh, and make that positive, and make that negative, and that is our solution right there. You could also just memorize that, it's a very important formula. That would be answer E. Anyway, that is the last question of Physics GRE GR0877. I hope you learned something. I hope you had fun. Uh, and anyway, good luck on your exam.